Paul Josh here, and this is my review, or post-humorous review, of uh, Cirque du Freak, The Vampire's Assistant. Now, I say post-humorous because, frankly, this series is pretty much dead on arrival, and uh, I want to make this clear right off the bat that this is one of those f fantasy franchises, quote-unquote, that launches off with a part one, leaves you with a cliffhanger, and will never warrant a sequel because it did not make nearly enough money to generate that such. So this co movie cost $40 million to make, which is admittedly cheaper than most fantasy movies that try for this. And it only made $28 million worldwide. That's pretty abysmal, and uh, half of that is domestic. So yeah, there's no chance this is getting a sequel, or a reboot, more than likely. But at the same time, I did want to bring this, this video up, because I rented this movie just the other day, and was very pleasantly surprised by it, actually. And uh, let me tell you why. I'm not going to say the movie's perfect, but it does definitely have a lot of positive aspects to it, I think, personally. So, let's start. First off, the story, hmm, a little hard to summarize, but suffice to say that Darren and his best friend Steve er, find and manage to get a ticket to a traveling freak show called the Cirque du Freak and wind up not only between the, cir the circus's politics... But also with the va opposed vam opposing vampire clans, one called the Vampires, and the other called the absolutely fucking ridiculous Vampanese. I don't care if I like this or not. That's the stupidest name I've ever heard. Get on with it. Get on with it. All right. So to start off, I think the story is uh, very interesting. I want to get it right off the bat, but at the same time, really, really hard to pack into this movie because. From what I understand, they condense the first three of the da of the Darren Sean novels, and I realize these novels are less than 200 pages, but even then, that's 600 pages, so... Well, you that's a lot of pages to stuff into a movie. The same thing happened with Aragon, where it was woefully underdeveloped. But, thankfully, Cirque du Freak actually just has... It seems stuffed. Which is not really a great way to make your movie. I mean, you never really get to sit back and relax and enjoy something. It's, as I've heard many reviews quote... Uh, an experience of constant education, and, you know, that, that is, like I said, not the best way to make a movie, but at the same time, the concepts in this are quite cool. I really like the idea of including a freak show in a movie, uh, particularly the portion of the movie that focuses on just the freak show itself is very cool to watch. It feels like you're at a sort of freak show yourself, and I think, in particular, the emphasis on the freak show with the vampiric elements makes it not really feel like one of these mm, recent up just wellspring of uh, vampire spawn movies that are coming out and uh, really starts to differentiate it and it gets into what I thought New Moon started to get into which is it starts to really make it a fantasy rather than horror and I actually like this aspect of it I think that a lot of the characters in Cirque du Freak are not properly developed it does have the dreaded montage effect at one point and overall it could have been a little more coherent, and especially the ending maybe could have been a little more conclusive, but I can understand what they were going for. And while I'm not really going to knock them for it, like I said, I did want to let everyone know what you're getting into beforehand. As for the characters, like I said, it's hit or miss, um, with, as with the story. The main actor who plays Darren Sean, a new actor, not too good, kind of bland, frankly. The actor who plays Steve, not a bad actor in and of itself. I've seen him do well in other things, but really overacts in this one. And uh, the only person that really does a great job, I think, is my personal or my personal favorite, John C. Riley, as uh, Larton Krepsley, the vampire who cohorts uh, Darren into becoming the titular assistant. Now, John C. Riley is a really good actor. I don't think a lot of people see him in his best light. In most cases, they'll look to something like Talladega Nights or Step Brothers to see his acting talent, but the man really does do a great job. And even in his silly affair, like Walk Hard, you know what? I still really admire him. He's an intensely likable guy. He's got that kind of easy charisma, and he definitely can act. Particularly Gangs of New York, he's quite, as, or quite good in. And even though it is another comedic role, it's a more subtle comedic role in Chicago. I thought he was quite nice. Anyway, enough uh, <laughs> enough about my love for John C. Riley. Continuing on, I think a lot of the cast cast's acting can be put down to one thing: over the top. 
everything is really overacted. Uh, particularly Mr. Tiny, the main villain of this movie, deliciously evil. It works out better in some cases than it does others. Like I just said, Mr. Tiny works out really nicely. Ever the Snake Boy plays it fairly subtle, actually, one of the few actors. John C. Riley manages to mash with all moods, which I really appreciated. And the only person I really have a problem in or problem with is the main evil Vampanese person. I can't remember his name for the life of me, you'll have to excuse me, but it's not of utmost importance. Suffice to say he was ridiculous. I don't know if he was like that in the books, I haven't read them. But at the same time, uh, <laughs> you just he was like rawr, rawr, rawr. he's trying to snap at the main actors. It was really stupid looking and I felt idiotic just watching the movie. Now, lastly, the effects are actually surprisingly good for a forty million dollar movie. Not amazing, you can definitely tell their effects. But I think they do work well, particularly the vampire flitting is nice. And uh, sound score, mm, nothing too much to stand out. So why am I even reviewing this movie if I was pleasantly surprised by it? By what I've said, it doesn't really sound like, even just going off my own thoughts, that I enjoyed this movie. And yet somehow I did, and I think that really just comes back to two main things. One, the concept, and two, John C. Riley. Actually, I guess three things. The director's vision for this movie, I think, really helps things out. I'll break them down one by one. By one. First off, like I said, John C. Riley, fantastic actor, manages to mesh with all the different types of modes of this movie. One reason this movie fails is because it tries for so many things. It tries to be horrific at points. It tries to be fantastical and epic at points. It tries to be kind of a subtle drama at points. And at other times, it tries to go for sheer out camp. Most of the time, it does not hit its mark, but at the same time, it's these kind of wildly fluctuating movies that are really ambitious that I actually really have to give credit for and oftentimes enjoy. And like I said, John C. Riley definitely just meshes perfectly with all of these moods. Really great actor, definitely not slumming it. I uh, really hope, I really had hoped before I checked out and saw what this movie's box office was that uh, they would have continued the series, but mm, no such luck. Uh, secondly, the concepts in this movie, like I said, the freak show, generally a very rare thing and and uh, I really liked the meshing of vampire lore, the freak show, and in particular this kind of interdimensional villain, I guess. That's not really spoiling anything, because honestly the movie doesn't explain it as who well either, undoubtedly meant to re be reserved for later uh, entries in the franchise. It's now dead. But anyway, like I said, I think it's a really interesting mesh of things, uh, particularly, and this really kind of stems into my third point, the director's vision for the movie to make it uh, a lot really funny. There's a really a lot of dark humor in this movie, and there's a couple bits in the trailer that might make you giggle, but particularly uh, Darren's death, quote unquote, was absolutely hilarious how it happened, and uh, a, not only an example of John C. Riley really doing a great job, but just really comic timing in general. And I like it that way. They were trying to mesh all of these different gory and comedic elements together, even though they didn't necessarily hit all their marks. And that's why I really enjoyed this movie and recommend it to other people, because it's a really great concept, I think. It's almost like a slightly more mature, serial, Goosebumps-esque fantasy. And that may not sound entirely appealing, but also because I think it's a really ambitious movie, and I'm definitely willing to give the benefit of the doubt for those types of movies. Uh, forgive me if I'm saying if I'm saying so, and you're gonna balk at me, but I actually enjoyed S uh, Richard Kelly's Southland Tales, despite it being kind of a mess. All right, really a mess, because it did try for something different, and I really gotta I really gotta respect that in a movie where something like Green Zone with Matt Damon can be released. It's basically Jason Bourne during the war, but um, yeah, regardless, you know, check this movie out. It's not the greatest movie. And, but you know what? Even despite it being constant, uh, an experience of constant education, I really enjoyed myself throughout. There's some great bits of humor. The only thing I really have to knock it against is the action scenes, which are sometimes really poorly filmed. Uh, not because of the camera angles, but some of the effects they do, such slow motion and like half motion. It just seemed excessive and overdone. But overall, this is a really good movie. It's enjoyable. It's not the greatest movie, like I often say, but I think not many things can be, I suppose. But I think it's definitely one worth checking out, and probably died an undeserving fate. Overall, yeah. Go check out Cirque de Freak, the Vampire's Assistant. You might like it, you might not. Either way, that's what I'm here for.